After an impressive 3-0 start to the NFL season, the Buffalo Bills have lost the last two games in pretty rough fashion. So in today's video, I want to talk about the Buffalo Bills and answer the question of whether or not the Buffalo Bills should start to panic. So as I mentioned, we are going to be talking about the Buffalo Bills and answering the question of whether or not this team should actually be panicking. The way the video is going to work is I'm going to begin by sort of recapping the beginning of these first five weeks for the Buffalo Bills. And then towards the back end of the video, I will talk about whether or not this team should be panicking or not. Of course, everything will have timestamps on the timeline, so if you just want to skip to your favorite part, go right ahead, but I suggest just watching the full video. And if you guys do go on to enjoy the video, make sure you guys hit the like and subscribe button, but let's get into it. So as I kind of alluded to in the introduction of this video, we all know how the Buffalo Bills season has went so far. You had a week one victory versus the Cardinals in which you started off pretty slow, but eventually found your footing and ultimately came back to beat an Arizona team that's actually pretty good. Then in weeks two and three, you absolutely destroyed two really bad teams. Miami obviously had Tua for the majority of the game, but they still got absolutely beat up by the Buffalo Bills. And then, of course, that was the game that Tua had another concussion in. So, of course, the Buffalo Bills would hold on to dominate the rest of that game. Versus the Jacksonville Jaguars, that game was over by the first quarter. It was about as big of a beatdown as I've maybe seen in the NFL. But then the real test started to begin. You had the Baltimore Ravens and the Houston Texans in back-to-back -back weeks in which the Buffalo Bills failed both tests. Going up against the Baltimore Ravens, they had some good moments and it found like, or and it seemed like they had found something in that early second half. But of course, the fourth down didn't work their way and everything kind of fell from there. So ultimately, they would go on to lose that game in pretty dominant fashion with a final score of 35 to 10 to Baltimore. But that's OK. You suffer one loss to a really good team and it just wasn't your day. That's usually pretty understandable and not something that I think we'd be too critical of. But then you went up against Houston and Houston, I don't want to say dominated you, but owned you for the majority of the game, primarily in that first half. And then, of course, once your team started to figure it out in the second half, it was just a little bit too much to overcome. When we look at the general statistics, you can definitely take these statistics at face value, but I do think there needs to be a little bit of context added to them. Offensively speaking, they are averaging 28.4 points per game, which is the third best in the NFL. They're averaging 3.4 touchdowns per game, which is the second best in the NFL. And they're averaging just a hair under 300 yards per game, which puts them at number 22 in the NFL. Now, again, I do want to add context to this one because ultimately this is the same team that dropped 10 points versus Baltimore and 47 points to Jacksonville. So it is one of those things where certain numbers are skewed. And of course, you were a little too early in the season to really make those statistics really mean a whole lot. But for the sake of the video and for the sake of just simplicity, that's how much points, yards and touchdowns are putting up a game on average. And then defensively speaking, their numbers are also very solid. They only give up 21.2 points per game, which is the 12th best in the NFL. They only give up 342.4 yards per game, which is the 20th best in the NFL and only give up 2.4 touchdowns per game, which is the 14th best in the NFL. Again, adding context to those numbers, they gave up 35 to Baltimore and they gave up 28 to Arizona, but they also had games where they only gave up 10 to Miami and 10 to Jacksonville. So those numbers are a little bit skewed and a little bit, I don't want to say untrue, but you get my point. Ultimately, those are just averages of the first five games. So of course, take those numbers as they are, but just know that those numbers aren't completely indicative of how good or how bad this team may be. And I would say the main highlight thing that I've noticed through the first five weeks of this NFL season has been the inconsistent play of this offense, because I believe defensively, they've been pretty consistent and playing pretty well throughout most of the season. Obviously, in that Arizona game, early on in the game, it wasn't pretty, but eventually they kind of started to connect and play better. It was week one, so it was definitely understandable. And then you had two dominant showcases against Miami and Jacksonville, where you only gave up 10 points in each game before you gave up 35 to the Baltimore Ravens, in which you went up against by far the best offense you've faced so far this season. But I think you have to give the defense credit against Houston. They played a lot better. Ultimately, they really kept them in check in that second half and made it very difficult for Stroud and those guys. So it's kind of difficult to really gauge how good this defense is. I think this defense is on the really good side of things. Um, Baltimore's offense is just ridiculously good and I think it was just one of those days where the Buffalo Bills offense just couldn't do anything which made it so much harder for the defense to really put up a good effort in that performance. It was also a game where the tone was set very early on. Baltimore wanted to run the football and well Buffalo just really didn't have an answer for it for most of the game. Again that Baltimore game kind of feels like a tad bit of an outlier because typically Buffalo is going to play a much more competitive game. They are not a team that typically gets beat out especially in that sort of fashion so 
I kind of view it as a tad bit of an outlier and maybe a bit fluky. That's not to say that Baltimore could not have won that game in a different way. I do think that game still would have been extremely close, but ultimately speaking, I would expect more from Buffalo. I don't expect them to have a game like this more than likely for the rest of the season. I said it in, I believe, my reactions to that game that if these two teams played 10 times, I think both teams would find a way to win five games each. So that's kind of how I feel about Buffalo and Baltimore. Another thing I've noticed about this offense and kind of moving back to the offensive side of things is that this team really does have a couple holes that need to be addressed maybe during the season through a trade or maybe somehow in the offseason number one the offensive line has been a little bit hit and miss I'm not saying the offensive line has been bad but it does feel like this team is struggling with a couple issues on the offensive line in the first three weeks of the season I thought the offensive line looked really really good but these past two weeks it just has not looked like the same offensive line that we saw in those first three weeks I found this statistic on Twitter that I thought was pretty interesting Josh Allen was pressured on 16 dropbacks against the Houston Texans and on those dropbacks he finished one for 14 for only 24 yards now I don't want to put all of the blame on the offensive line because I think there's a little bit of something else that's also going on that is also making this offensive line struggle in some ways and that's the fact that this team just simply doesn't have a true wide receiver one that Josh Allen can consistently rely upon whenever you have a quarterback like Josh Allen who's trying to find and feed all these different guys who do different things it's always going to be difficult especially when you're holding the ball for longer times rather than if Josh Allen had a Stefan Diggs or Devontae Adams like guy who could be that true wide receiver one that you can consistently rely upon even when they are a tad bit covered. I've been on record stating that I actually do like this receiving core for the Buffalo Bills. I don't think it's perfect, but I do like this idea of having different guys who ex who who excel at certain different things. What I mean by that is Keon Coleman is a bit more of your athlete, your big play guy. Khalil Shakir is your do-it-all underneath, more of a slot receiver sort of guy. Then you have Matt Collins, who again is kind of similar to Khalil Shakir, but he's a little bit bigger, sort of a do-it-all deep threat sort of option. And then of course, Curtis Samuel is sort of your wild card do-it-all uh, specialty type of guy. So this is an offense that has four or five guys that all specialize in a specific category but don't necessarily excel at anything i would say maybe the one guy who does excel at something is khalil shakir he's a really special talent but when he's not playing it's really hard for these other weapons to really get going and so while i do like this receiving core it does still feel like this team is just missing that true wide receiver one who you can consistently rely upon to create separation and to consistently be that go-to guy for josh allen unfortunately keon coleman just doesn't have that chemistry nor do I think he really has that true receiver one talent I think he's a great player but when it comes down to the nuances of route running I just don't know if he's ever going to have that and then Dalton Kincaid is a very good player but I also don't know if he's ever going to be that true tight end one like maybe a Travis Kelsey has been to Patrick Mahomes so because of that, it does feel like this offense is missing a little bit of something. And when these receivers cannot create separation or if the play call doesn't work as it's anticipated, the offensive line is obviously going to struggle a tad bit more because they have to block for longer and Josh Allen has to go out there and make plays that potentially could lead to sacks or pressures. So yes, the offensive line has to play better, but I also do think that we have to point at all of the other issues on this offense. This is also a team that in my opinion just doesn't have a dominant running game. They only average 4.3 yards per game only averaging 118.2 rushing yards per game which is the 14th best in the nfl so i don't think this team has a particularly bad rushing game but when your offensive line isn't that great and your receiving core doesn't have that true receiver one ideally you would like to have somebody in the backfield who can consistently get you five yards six yards a carry like a saquon or a derrick henry now it's not to say that james cook is a bad player because he's definitely not he's a very serviceable and i would say a very good pro bowl level level running back but he isn't i would say like a difference maker if you get my gist here he's somebody who yes can make a difference on any given day but he isn't really consistent like a, again a saquon or a Derrick Henry. So no, I'm not suggesting this team goes out there and tries to draft a running back like an Ash and Genty or Ollie Gordon type of guy. Like that's just not what this team needs. But it does feel like this team just is missing something offensively. And I think it's that true receiver one type of guy. But now let's actually kind of answer the question of whether or not this team should panic. And I think a good way to start that is by looking at the rest of their schedule and kind of deciphering what this team is going to finish this season. Because when I look at this schedule, I don't think it's terribly difficult. I think these next five or so weeks, they're there's a couple winnable matchups. In week six, you have the New York Jets on Monday Night Football. The Jets just fired Robert Sala, so I do think that is a fairly winnable matchup. Then you have four straight relatively easy matchups. You have the Tennessee Titans, the Seattle
Seattle Seahawks, the Miami Dolphins, and the Indianapolis Colts. Obviously, none of these games are just give me games, but I would imagine that Buffalo will be favored in all of those matchups. Then you have back-to-back -back weeks against really good teams in Kansas City and San Francisco. Obviously, San Francisco has some issues right now, but they potentially could have Christian McCaffrey by then, so we'll have to wait and see. And then they finish their season off with the Rams, the Lions, the Patriots twice, and the New York Jets. A couple winnable matchups. I would probably say I would favor the Lions over Buffalo, though. So I look at the rest of their schedule, and I think there's only really like three, maybe four games in which the opposing team will be favored or will have good odds of winning that matchup. For the rest of them, I do think Buffalo will be favored, so I do imagine that Buffalo is going to be able to win a ton of those matchups. So because of that, I don't see how this team is going to miss the playoffs, and I don't really think that this is necessarily a team that I'm necessarily panicking on, because the expectations for me for Buffalo was that this is a team that's going to make the playoffs, and whenever you have a guy like Josh Allen, he always gives your team a chance in the playoffs, even if it hasn't worked out so far in his career. He always gives this team a chance, and I do think this defense is good enough to help this team go over. So I think if I'm predicting how many wins they'll get this year, I think they'll easily surpass 10 to maybe even 12 wins this year, likely be a top four seed. I don't think they'll have any problems winning their division because their division is pretty weak right now. And so because of that, they'll likely have home field advantage throughout a couple games in the playoffs. And I think they have a really good chance of maybe making that deep run. I think barring this team just completely collapsing over the next couple weeks, which, which I don't think should happen because I look at their schedule and I think it's pretty favorable for them. So if they could just handle their business, they should be pretty set for the playoffs. And I think this team has a good chance to make a somewhat deep run. I'm not going to predict a Super Bowl for this team because I do think this team does have some limitations and does have some issues. But I do think, as I've said, as long as you have Josh Allen and as long as you have this talented defense, this team can be very good. But I guess we'll just have to wait and see. But you guys let me know in the comment section below, what do you guys think about this Buffalo Bills team? Should they be panicking or are they in a good position, which I kind of think they are. But if you guys enjoyed the video, again, make sure you hit the like and subscribe button. And I love you guys. Peace.